Throughout the past month, I've been testing out the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, and I have quickly fallen in love with this camera, and it has earned a permanent spot in my camera bag, and throughout this video, I'm going to tell you exactly why. Before I head into the city to show you what this camera can do, I want to give you a quick rundown of some of these specs. First off, this camera is tiny. It is 179 grams, and on top of that, it has a 1 inch sensor, which is incredible to pack in such a small package. It is basically the same sensor size as most point shoots, which means you're going to get a pretty good dynamic range, colors, and low light performance. The lens on this camera is also a 20mm and f2. That f2 is definitely going to help you in the low light situations as well. The Pocket 3 also has a 2 inch rotatable screen, which is fantastic for lining up your compositions and even when you're vlogging, making sure that you're actually like, in the frame. And this screen is incredibly bright, like I haven't had any issues even in like bright daylight, I can see it no problem. And when you flip the screen vertical, it goes into a portrait mode, you get a vertical video, which is great for short form content. It also has a built in gimbal, which allows you to get some really nice smooth footage, it doesn't matter if you're walking, in a car, train, whatever, it's gonna be nice and smooth. And on top of that, it enables it to do some really cool different tracking shots, things like face detection, object detection, spin shots. Uh, and then there's some other shooting modes that I'm going to show you in the test outside. Something else that I want to mention is the price. This camera comes in at 519 USD for the base camera here. And if you opt for the creator combo, it comes in at 669 USD. And if you're going to create content for social media, if you're going to create it for YouTube or whatever, I do recommend that you at least look at the creator combo. I did get it. If you get all of the accessories in there separately, it's actually more than the combo itself. So it's actually not a bad deal. Inside the combo kit, you get battery handle, you get a tripod, you get the DJI Mic 2, and you also get a wide-angle lens. The aim of this video is to be an overall features video for the average user and not necessarily a professional, but I do want to note that there are some advanced settings in here that could be very useful. So you can shoot in hybrid log gamma, you can shoot in D-log, you can also then set your exposure, white balance, and focus mode, and then when it comes to the audio, you can set the channel, the wind reduction, and also the directionality of the onboard mic. If you want a deeper dive into these settings and pushing this camera to its absolute limits, let me know in the comments below and I can definitely do that. But I've rambled on about specs long enough. Time for us to go outside and test it out. One thing that is absolutely great about this camera is how easy it is to use and also how discreet it can be. I mean, I'm wearing a mic right now and you might not even know besides hopefully the audio sounds good. One other thing that's super nice about this camera is that it has a built-in gimbal. So when I'm walking, everything is nice and smooth. And when you pair it with object tracking like I'm doing now, it doesn't matter where I am. I don't even have to look at you. and It'll track me and keep me in the center of the frame, which is super nice and low maintenance. Currently, I'm shooting in 4K24 and it does go up to, I think, 4K60. So if you want to get nice slow motion, you can do it that way. It also has 2.7 and 1080p. And when you're in 1080p, it does have a slow-mo mode that I think goes up to about I want to say 120 frames per second, so you get really smooth, nice, you know, slow motion if you really want it. I'm not much of a slow motion guy, but, you know, to each their own. And since I love Madison Square Park and the Flatiron area, I figured I'd come over here to test it out. And I better make it quick because it looks like it's about to pour. So, let's get started. I figured I'd come over here by the flat iron to give you a little preview of what the time lapse, hyperlapse, and motion lapse looks like. So this does also have zoom. And this is about as far as it can go, which is nice to get the extra reach, but it really leaves a lot to be desired. So you can't zoom much, but it has a joystick that you can actually control where you're looking. Um, it's taking some getting used to, because I'm not used to using something like this, but one all, it's been pretty fun so far. So one other thing that is really cool, and I've talked about it a little bit, is that it has face tracking. So wherever I go, it'll follow me. It's set up on a tripod, so I'm always dead center, which is super nice when you're like just like general vlogging and you're by yourself and you want to add a little bit of camera movement. Now, there is face tracking, which this is what that is, but there's also object tracking, which to be honest, I haven't really noticed much of a difference. Maybe it's just more an abstracted version of face tracking. So let me show you what it is. 
So this is ActiTrack, and I don't know if I've really noticed much of a difference. It's basically the same thing. Like, it'll still follow you on the tripod wherever you go and keep you center frame, which I think is pretty awesome. Like, I get to be lazy, which is really nice. One feature that I've been using a lot lately is called Tilt Lock. Essentially, it's locking the gimbal on its horizontal axis so it keeps the horizon nice and level. It's great when you're trying to record landscapes or you're in a moving vehicle. But one thing I like to do a lot, especially in New York, is basically point the gimbal straight up and record the buildings. And especially with the wide angle lens, it gives you a really cool perspective. So I figured Hudson Yards would be the absolute perfect place to show this off. Okay, so it is finally dark outside and I can go test the last feature of the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 that I'm very excited about and I have not tried at all. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens. So let's go. I was debating if I should go up to Times Square to test out the low light capabilities of this camera, but you know, it's Times Square and if I don't have to go up there, I'm not gonna go. So I came out to K-Town instead and this is the low light mode on the Osmo Pocket 3. And honestly, I'm pretty impressed. It's pretty sharp for such a small camera. Also, I'm testing with and without the wide angle lens. With such a narrow street, I figured this would actually be a perfect use case for the wide angle lens as well. I'm not sure if I'd call this necessarily a feature of the camera itself, or maybe it's just the ecosystem that you're buying into, but this is the DJI Mimo companion app, and you can do a lot of really cool things. You basically have the entire control of the camera just from your phone. So I don't know if I'm gonna be showing it from necessarily the camera, or maybe it's the screen recording, but I think my absolute favorite feature on here is, check this out, you can drag over the object, which is me in this case, and there we go. It enables the tracking. So you are basically a one person army of a camera crew, which is pretty awesome. And you can get some incredible shots with this. Um, I honestly have not messed around with this nearly enough, um, but you can just look it up online. Uh, there's some amazing creators who are doing some really cool stuff. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you like this type of content, subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, drop in the comment section below and I will be hanging around. Thanks for watching.